the fact of the matter is the dollar is dying. Everyone knows it now. Gold and silver are really, truly the only tried and true time-tested ways to actually hedge against a failing fiat currency. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for January 22nd through January 29th, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature pre-1933 gold $10 and $20 Liberties at $89 over melt and $139 over melt, respectively. Next, backdated one-ounce silver maples are at $3.75 over spot with a minimum order of 50. We also have backdated quarter-ounce gold maples at $59 over melt when you purchase two or more. And finally, backdated one-tenth-ounce gold maples are just $32.50 over melt with your purchase of four or more coins. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We are delighted to have this returning guest. Patrick Holland is the founder of the Missouri Freedom Initiative. He joins us this Friday, January 19th, 2024. Patrick, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Dunnigan, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor, man. Thank you. For the guests who are just joining us, we have had you on a couple of times so far to talk about some very interesting and powerful legislation that is in the works in the state of Missouri to uh, underscore and enshrine in Missouri state law the position of gold, silver, and potentially cryptocurrencies, electronic currencies, as legal tender in many different respects, including making sure that there's no sales tax, making sure that there's no capital gains tax, making sure that there's the ability for private parties to settle contracts in precious metals and also uh, to protect their rights against seizure of precious metals uh, or or to prevent the people of Missouri from being interfered with by any federal legislation that would come out that contradicts Missouri's law uh, that's in the works on this. And that uh, you have shown us, we have a link in the description of this video, folks, to the draft version of the bill. It's SB 735, I believe. Uh, That's correct. It's called the Constitutional Money Act. Yes, it just got updated too. A a really exciting few amendments. I'll talk about that in a second. So if you could give us an update. Uh, Today, we were supposed to be interviewing Missouri Senator Bill Eigel, who has been the the author of this bill and, and the sponsor of it, and we couldn't get him on right now because he's actually embroiled, I understand, in uh, filibuster on the Senate floor as we speak. So could you bring us up to date on perhaps that, that right now, why we're speaking to Patrick Holland instead of Senator Eigel? And then secondly, if you could give us some update on the status and progress or any roadblocks that are, need to be overcome in the, in the forward motion of uh, Missouri Constitutional Money Act. You bet. Uh, first off, I wouldn't presume to speak for the senator, so I'm going to say what I know best, obviously. But, uh, but uh, basically, I can't speak for Senator Eigel. But he is filibustering right now on the Senate floor, as you said earlier, and this started yesterday morning. And what it is is, uh, I'm sure that many of your listeners and your viewers are familiar with the terms rhinos and corporatists, um, and I call corporatists squishies. Uh, and the reason being is, of course, they, they're easily shaped and molded into whatever their corporate sponsors want them to be. So that's why I call them squishies. Uh, Bill is fighting rhinos and squishies right now in the Republican Party because they set up a priority list, a punch list, if you will, during this past summer and informed everyone this is our priority. This is the caucus priority. Republicans, right? Well, they're not doing anything for their priorities at all. They're uh, trying to get corporatist bills through again, just like leadership always does that are corporatists and rhinos. So Bill is fighting this. He is trying to get them to to keep to their word and what is the top priorities for the GOP caucus in the state of Missouri. And one of the big ones has to do with initiative petition reform. And that is a high priority for the caucus, but they haven't put any of those bills in committee yet. And that's basically, and there's seven folks in in this filibuster altogether, seven folks participating. So the Senate has uh, come to a standstill right now. But, you know, that warms the cockles of your heart if you're a liberty person. You know, there's not a lot getting done, obviously. And so the corporatist bills aren't getting through either. So, but at any rate, uh, so that's my best understanding of what's happening right now. So Bill is fighting for the people. 
I mean, he is fighting for the grassroots. He's fighting for constitutional conservatives. Well, as, as when I when I was trying to uh, reach out to him, to his his uh, chief of staff, to yourself, I finally found out that this is the reason that the, and I said, oh, this is democracy in action. That's a good an- that's a good answer. That's a good, good, good reason for why we can't do an interview right now is because we're actually doing the real hard work uh, that democracy demands and the sacrifice and the inconvenience and all of that, the, the, the vital struggle uh, to make sure that the right uh, discussions are being had and the right issues are being held in front and people, people, uh, people's feet being held to the fire. Specifically, then, on that Missouri Constitutional Money Act, Senate Bill 735, SB 735, uh, the subtitle is Creates and Modifies Provisions Relating to Gold and Silver. I read the summary of the bill. It is fascinating. Folks, you've got to go to the link in the description of this video. Read the entire summary. It only takes three or four minutes to read it through. A lot of key things jump right out at me uh, in looking through that. One is the uh, provision to make sure that private parties in the state can contract, can sign uh, financial contracts with each other, whether it's for a sale of property or whatever, and for settlement uh, in species, in in gold and silver. Also, uh, property rights protection and protection against federal overreach. Can you talk to us about uh, the progress and any challenges that that bill is facing and moving forward? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Let's start first with a couple of uh, pretty exciting amendments that were just added to the bill. And so I'm not, I haven't looked at, and by the way, this is literally two days ago, literally two days ago, it passed out of committee. And so that was a committee replacement that uh, Senator Eigel had put in, but he had a couple of good ideas. And one of which is just to, even though if you read the bill, it's, it's actually in there by default, by proxy. What he added was a little clause in there that businesses can pay their employees in gold and silver if they want. Uh, you know, because it, it, the way the bill is written, that's a given anyway, but it wasn't specifically stated. Hey, businesses, if your employees request gold and silver, you have the right to do that. Um, and it's just a reminder, a gentle reminder to businesses if employees want to get paid either in electronic versions of gold and silver through a bullion bank or something like that, or if they want physical, you know, on payday. Uh, so at any rate, I think that was a lovely addition, um, you know, just to underscore, you know, I think some people's concerns are businesses aren't going to pick up on this. I think they will. I think they will. And and let's not forget other states are doing this too, not just Missouri. But okay, so let's go into the challenges of the bill. Well, Bill Eigel is uh, leading something called the Freedom Caucus in the state of Missouri. And it's an extension of the Freedom Caucus we see in D.C. right now. And so at any rate, they're trying to stick with the actual constitutional conservative priorities that are in line of course, with the platform that the Republicans claim is theirs. And so at any rate, there are people, uh, for instance, the floor leader and speaker pro tem that are on the other side of that particular coin. So Bill Eigel's legislation may may never actually get to the floor, uh, you know, because Senator Eigel, of course, is fighting these folks. And it's not like they've got boxing gloves, although that would be more entertaining. However, it's only audio coming out of the Senate. There is absolutely um, no archiving of Senate stuff. So you have to be listening live. Otherwise, you miss it entirely. But Bill is fighting the good fight. He is trying to get gold and silver across the finish line. He's trying to. And and by the way, this is not an ad for Bill Eigel, um, you know, because the Missouri Freedom Initiative maintains our stance that we don't endorse candidates. Uh, But if someone were to come and ask me personally why I like Senator Eigel, I mean, number one, gold and silver. I mean, that's just a brilliant bill. I just love that he filed that last year and he continued on this year. He's still fighting for it. But getting stuff like that over the finish line requires, requires, mind you, I'm using that word very deliberately, requires rhinos and squishies to also get on board. And so, but the thing is, is they're not even following their own platform at this point in time. So he is trying to actually remind them who they work for, which is uh, the people, and to listen to their constituents and to pay attention to what they're asking their uh, representatives and their senators to do. Well, let me let me interrupt there, then we can help. So of our 100,000 subscribers, we've got a good number in Missouri. So if you're hearing this in Missouri, you need to get on the phone, call your senator, your, your Missouri state senator, and tell them to get behind Bill Eigel and his Senate bill, SB 735, if they're not, if they won't commit to that, ask them why they won't, ask them why they won't stand up for the people of Missouri and their right to sound money as guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution, and 
as uh, promoted in this bill, this Constitutional Money Act, SB 735. And don't take, you know, tap dancing as an answer, but, but stand up for the future, not only of ourselves, for our own savings, earnings, retirements, but for those of our children and grandchildren. And, and uh, stand up for doing the right thing here in, in Missouri. So, okay, go ahead. You bet. So that's one side. And the other side, of course, is the House. And we have uh, a excellent representative. His name is uh, Bill Hardwick. Another bill. So we have Bill Eigel, Bill Hardwick, of course, both having the same silver and gold bill. And so he is trying to get this actually into committee. He, he's been unable to get it. And that's a different side. So that would be the Speaker of the House, Dean Plocker, the same guy who killed silver and gold last year. Or I'm sorry, in 2023 is the same guy who's not even putting it in committee yet. Uh, so there's no reason not to put it in committee at this point other than political reasons. And so at any rate, that's another one I would actually ask of your viewers, uh, particularly if they're in the state of Missouri, is to call, and I'll, I'll get you all the links so you can put it in, in the description of the video. Let's call Dean Plocker and let's find out why he's not letting this go into committee. There's nothing else getting more calls, more emails. You know, according to the representatives I'm talking to, all they're hearing about pretty much is gold and silver and IP initiative reform, which is something I alluded to a little bit earlier. That's what they're hearing. They're not hearing, oh, please get us a sports betting bill through. Oh, please get this corporatist, you know, bill through. Please get another farming subsidy through. They're not hearing that. But that's what they're pushing through the, the system right now. And guys, I assure you. If you guys ever think, well, gosh, I can't give up the federal politics, I can't give it up because, you know, there's just so much drama and intrigue there. It's my entertainment. It's the circus. I enjoy, you know, watching that stuff. You guys, if you pay attention to what's going on in your state, it's the same thing's going on in your state. It's just not getting on the news. And we're seeing right now, you know, a lot of interesting stuff happening, happening right now in our general legislature while we're trying to get silver and gold through, by the way. Um, so that's why everyone's noticing suddenly. They're watching what's going on. You know, they're listening. And, and the House actually has a video feed, not just audio. The Senate just has audio. So you can actually watch this stuff in real time. And in the case of the House, you can go back into the archives and pick up stuff later if you don't have time to listen during the day. But the silver and gold stuff is really, really, really important to try and get through this year. But, you know, once again, we are hitting these bottlenecks. Once again, no reason to have bottlenecks. This should be totally, totally bipartisan. Uh, it's silver and gold. But of course, as I told you last year, Dunnigan, uh, somehow the Democrats were able to turn silver and gold into a racial issue. Uh, so they managed to do that. And in fact, there was actually a little blurb uh, put into uh, an amendment. I told you there were several amendments that went on to Bill Eigel's bill. But I'm sure that if you guys read that, the whole bill, uh, it actually says towards the bottom that uh, any silver or gold coins with Nazi insignia will not be considered legal tender in the state of Missouri to placate those Democrats who are so offended by Nazi gold or silver. I <clears throat> I personally think that gold and silver is is um, um, not um, a racist issue. That's my personal belief and my personal opinion. But apparently there are those who disagree with me on that. But we actually threw that in there. We're calling that the Meredith Clause or the Meredith Amendment. <laughs> it's remarkable how many issues that are of real import to our country, to our states, to the families, to the individuals in our country have been derailed, sidelined, or how much spin is put on them by, I would say, mudslinging, where some corner fringe issue that almost doesn't apply in almost all cases it, it's really the tail wagging the dog of of derailing a very important uh, initiative by coming up with some some completely fringe case that almost never is an issue i mean i've been in the uh, as a licensed bullion dealer for four years now i've sold many millions of dollars of bullion never ever, ever have I come in contact with any bullion that matches the description that's being objected to. It's, it's, I think it's um, shameful that people who don't know what else to say, when they don't have a real argument against something, they'll come up with concocting something. And the people who do that know that they're doing that. You, you, you have to search 
you have to say, what can I do? I can't actually object to this on any rational. I can't come up with any reason. I can't, I can't debate this. I got to come up with either name calling or some way of, of uh, smearing this so that, so that it gives it a, a, uh, a bad taste or in people's mouths without, without actually having anything of substance to actually say, because you know they're on the wrong side of the, of the argument. They know that they're on the wrong side of the cause. And all they can come up with is some spurious, uh, sort of a straw man objection. I think that's shameful. And people need to see through right through that don't be distracted by that and so fine you've you've found a way to sidestep that that complete straw man objection and and move forward and that's what we need to do is just be persistent and uh, continue to you know uh, show fortitude in doing the right thing for our people absolutely I couldn't agree with you more and and you know what I had to look it up because uh, you know once again sometimes uh, you know someone knows something I don't and it happens a lot actually I looked it up. Nazi coins are real. They actually did mint coins and silver and gold. But the thing is, Dunnigan, the thing is, is they're so expensive. Uh, they're in collections and they're in museums, private collections. They're not in general circulation. You can't find them. And it would be like, you know, someone literally taking a silver eagle that just doesn't know any better and bringing it to the store and they give them a buck for it. You know, it'd be the equivalent of that because these things are 10, 15 times their weight in gold for the coins, in some cases more. And same thing with the silver. Yeah, it, it's absolutely preposterous. It, it's like taking a, a sure, uh, gold and silver have been the money of the world for 6,000 years. That means through all empires, through all jurisdictions, through all countries, whether just or unjust. And so to then say, oh, we can't use these elements of the periodic table anymore because at one time in history, there was an empire that, that used them and that empire uh, was immoral. It's like, okay, so that empire was immoral. They also breathed air, they drank water, they uh, used wooden uh, wood in their fireplaces. Are we gonna outlaw all those things too? It's, it's preposterous. It, it, it wouldn't stand up to an eighth grade debate class. So anyway, it's, it's great that you guys have found a way to, to get around that, that uh, false objection and move forward. Any other uh, challenges? It sounds like they're primarily political challenges uh, based on uh, the true uh, who's really backing or what's really the, what's really driving some of these parties that are blocking um, this legislation from moving forward. Any thoughts on the, the probability, the, the expectation or hopes of this bill being able to move forward this year? I'm obviously optimistic. You know, the, the year has just started. The legislative season just started two weeks ago. So I have hope, you know, that things can get done this year. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of politics going on, and this is an election year, and we have a lot of people running for higher office. And these are uh, major players that are involved in suppressing the gold and silver bill. I use the word suppressing. I love that. Um, the gold and silver bill in the state of Missouri. So, I mean, there, and I don't want to go through the names and everything, but the people in leadership, you know, basically in the House and in the Senate, pretty much are all going for higher office. So uh, consequently, that can be used against them. I mean, and, and I'm just talking political strategy here. You know, if Dean Plocker wants to become our lieutenant governor, he had better start listening to the people because he's had seven years in the House where he hasn't been listening to the people. And uh, so, <laughs> I mean, and it, he thinks probably he's the best choice, of course. But the fact of the matter is he's not listening. He's simply not listening. He doesn't care what his constituents want. He doesn't care what the people of the state want. He cares what he wants through his corporate paymasters. And apparently, you know, I, I don't know if this is personal or if his corporate paymasters are, are trying to stop the bill. I don't, I think it's personal. So I want to recap some of the key elements that we're looking for in, in this bill. One, you mentioned employers being able to pay wages in gold and silver, uh, state taxes being able to be payable in gold and silver, no state capital gains tax on gold and silver and no seizure of gold and silver by governments including the federal government and no federal laws prohibiting the use of gold and silver or any competitive currencies being able to be enforceable in the state of Missouri. Um, now you are in uh, communication with uh, leaders of initiatives that are similar to this in other states. There's a growing 
momentum. It's a movement across multiple states. I keep losing track. It was nine states. Now it's 14 states and so on who are moving forward. Um, some of those uh, moving uh, quite a bit farther than others. They're, they're taking the lead. Uh, you guys are making your legislation available, your draft legislation available for others to use and, and build on to keep this, this momentum going forward. Uh, you mentioned to me before we got started here that there's a couple of states that are uh, planning on moving forward with attempting to establish state depositories. Can you talk to us about that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so if you're in New Hampshire or if you're in Florida, and, and in, to some extent, Texas. Texas already has a depository. There is a group called the Citizens for Sound Money. Daniel Diaz heads that up. And uh, they're working on getting depositories, gold and silver depositories in states. That's what they do. And so New Hampshire and Florida are two very, very strong showings right now. Uh, I would, you know, I've talked to Daniel. I know Daniel. And I don't, I don't underestimate that man. He can get this kind of stuff done, but this is the big deal. I mean, this is the enchilada. And in fact, if you would, were to ask me, Dunnigan, what's the logical conclusion? What is the, the logical or the common sense uh, progression of getting gold and silver legal, legal tender? And the truth is a depository for your state, for your people that holds gold and silver, precious metals in reserve. Because the fact of the matter is, the dollar is dying. Everyone knows it now. I mean, and, and many people are confused. Nominal confusion is, is something we should talk about at some point. People are confused. No, things just cost more. And they don't understand that actually this is a, a mechanism that's happening on the other side with the dollar. The dollar is worth less. That's why things cost more. And so it's not like that jar of olives that you went to the grocery store to go get, you know, that's twice the price as it was just three years ago is worth more it's not worth more it's the currency that you're using to exchange for that can or jar of olives that is now worth less therefore you have to cough up more of them to get the same item that cost half that price nearly three years ago so that being in mind gold and silver are really truly the only tried and true time-tested ways to actually hedge against a failing fiat currency now, we have a 1,000 years of history with that. We have 5,000 years of history with gold and silver being used as money. But we have a 1,000 years of history that this is what people go to when, they're, when their paper currency fails, going back to the Chinese a 1,000 years ago. When you transition from one currency to another, and it doesn't matter what country you're in, you, val you value it against gold and silver, the old currency and the new currency. Gold and silver still play a role in transitioning in between currencies. This, and what's happening in the United States of America, of course, is they want to take us to a new digital dollar, a central bank digital currency. But I guarantee you gold and silver will be a part of this process. It has been throughout history. Uh, there's no reason to change it. And if the United States decides not to, that doesn't mean that the BRICs won't and everyone else won't. You know, we'll just go our own way, I guess, into total tyranny and enslavement. But the fact of the matter is uh, gold and silver is money, always has been money, and will continue to be money no matter what people at central banks say, no matter what national, you know, treasurers, you know, for different countries say, it doesn't matter. It truly doesn't matter. It's all about whether or not the people want to be enslaved or not. And gold and silver offers a beautiful, beautiful net to make sure that we stay comfortably within the realm of liberty and freedom in personal transactions and also in state transactions and in some cases, national transactions. This can be done electronically through bullion banks. So the gold and silver has got everything, every kind of transaction you can think of that's really convenient right now that we're using for the dollar. Everything from credit cards to online purchases, going to the store, you know, basically using change, using dollar bills or using credit cards or ATM cards uh, in, in the exception of credit cards, actually. Let's take that one out. Gold and silver has all of this covered. Every bit of it. And that's one thing that I've found out is I've done interviews on radio and, and, and also, you know, with people like, you know, you, you know, done again, people are curious, how can you possibly use coins as a transaction? How can that possibly be done? I don't have my device down here with me, but I have actually one of those metal purify, you know, detectors, very simple in a small digital scale right next to it. And then suddenly your retail store has a register that can take gold and silver coins. 
It's that simple. Give them change in U.S. dollars. You don't have to worry about change in gold. And, you know, once again, that's up to the, the store owner. Our bills in Missouri are very specific. Government, make gold and silver legal tender, and then just get out of the way. The free market has all of this covered. We do not want regulations from the state in handling of gold and silver and valuing of gold and silver. Because, yeah, we've had a lot of experience with government valuing gold and silver, haven't we? Uh, so that's what these bills do. And having a depository is the cream on the top. It is definitely where you want to be because now you have a central bank in your state. And it's got something in it of real value, not bonds, not treasuries, but gold and silver or a mixture of some. You know, some may start out small. I mean, I wish we had started when Texas did, you know, because Texas has got a lot going on in their depository. And uh, people need to um, need to recognize that, I think. I mean, they've done a really good job of inspiring other states that want to go the same way. Any uh, place that people can find a list of states if they want to make sure that they get involved, either to take advantage of what is already available in their state or to encourage their lawmakers to get on the job here and move forward in this movement? Absolutely. In fact, I'm going to tell you the number one resource that I use, and that's the blog space in the 10th Amendment Center dot com. They cover freedom legislation for all states. And we're not talking federal government stuff. They just cover state legislation. And it's everything from the Second Amendment Preservation Act that we have in Missouri, like Ohio's going through that right now. Um, and uh, But gold and silver legislation. Mike Mahari is very big into gold and silver. And so he covers that for every single state. And then uh, his articles often get reprinted in, um, oh boy, Shift Gold, uh, 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 Zero Hedge, you know, so people probably are familiar with Mike Mahari, but that is a great source to go to. If you want to know if your state has legislation, that is the place to go. Um, you can find out at their blog spot on the 10th Amendment Center website, 10th Amendment Center dot com. And uh, that's but there's also um, the Sound Money Defense League. But they often pull on stories from Mike Mahari as well, you know, because they're associated with Peter Schiff and uh, Mike Mahari is as well. So at any rate, there are plenty of good resources. The two I mentioned right now, and there's probably a lot more I've forgotten, where you can find out if your state is actually making the move to make gold and silver money again in your state, protecting its citizens from the onslaught of tyranny that a central bank digital currency promises. This is up to us, gang. The, the state's not going to do that automatically for you. The people have to fight for it. So if you're in your in your state, if you don't have legal tender laws yet, there's only five states that have legal tender law, by the way. So there's 45 others that need to get it done, right? If you're in one of those states, you definitely need to get involved in this. Find out if there's legislation already going and support it if you find it. If there are none, download a copy of the bill from uh, Senator Eigel. He's got a great bill, actually. Um, and take it to your senator, to your rep, and literally say, remake this, rewrite this for our state. Before the filing deadline ends, by the way, because in many states it ends in February. Sometime in a few states, it's actually in January, like Florida. Uh, so your pre-filing deadline hits, uh, you know, or a filing deadline hits, you know, for every state. You got to find that out, too. Gang, there is nothing more exciting than this project that the Missouri Freedom Initiative has ever worked on. And SAPA is really high up there, trust me. But this project alone is affects 6 million people in their every single day lives and will help to maintain the value of their savings, of their pensions. Go ahead. When you talk about the importance of a state depository and the importance of this uh, uh, gold and silver constitutional uh, money act in every state, the urgency aspect of it reminds me of the urgency of Noah building the ark prior to the storm because a storm is coming. We can see there's no denying that the the powers that be are on the move. They are bringing forward, uh, putting in place the, the uh, requirements that will try to capture all of our lives, every activity of our lives into central bank digital currency. So every action we take would be, we'd have no privacy, it would be completely traceable, be controllable, we could be turned off like a switch depending on whether we say or do the wrong thing, or whether we can travel, whether we can move so far from buy, purchase anything of a particular type or from farther from our home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If people want to reclaim 
and to assert their innate right to their freedom, their privacy, and constitutional uh, financial lives, which do, affects almost every aspect of our lives. This there's nothing that's as as urgent as this. Um, one of the things is education. And I understand there's educational resources available both at the Missouri Freedom Initiative as well as I, I will put a link to the 10th Amendment Center in the description of this video as well. And uh, Patrick, we're going to have to continue to have you back on because this is both important and urgent. It's a clear and present danger to our freedom uh, going forward for those states that are dragging their feet. Uh, I come in contact with this on an hourly basis as a bullion dealer because I have to ask every single client who calls me up to, to order bullion, what state are we shipping to to determine whether or not sales tax, etc., is 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 a uh, must be paid it must be withheld on the sales of precious metals which is unthinkably uh, illogical because what they're doing is they're exchanging fake money for real money and then you're taxing it as though they're buying some trinket or something when what they're doing is they're just we're just doing an exchange of money <laughs> uh, so anyway yeah you're right and that's a really really good point too uh, you know, the sales tax, by the way, if your state has sales tax, that has to go first before you go for legal tender status, because it makes no sense to have gold and silver as as transactable money. And there's a tax on the money that you're using, not to mention the item you're buying. I mean, that's just dumb. So that's a first step. Dunnigan, thank you for bringing that up. And one more thing I'd like to mention is this is a critically, critically important time in history right now where the people can decide what is money. Now, everyone should understand, because sometimes there's misunderstanding, it's not like in the Missouri bill, it's like, we're going to gold and silver, and we're doing away with the dollar. There's nothing like that. So states that are actually doing anti-CDBC bills and turning them into laws, Florida is one of them, uh, actually, that's a feel-good bill, unfortunately. And I know that I'm going to get flamed for that. That is a feel-good bill, because if you look at Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution, basically the U.S. government gets to determine what's legal tender for the country, for the country. But states, states can actually do above and beyond that. They have to accept legal tender status of anything that the federal government shoves down their throats. But it doesn't mean you have to use it if you have another option in your state. That's where silver and gold legislation comes in. And trust me, gang, trying to get this done on a federal level, you'd have an easier time raising the Titanic with tweezers than you would getting gold and silver legal tender legislation done through the federal government. It won't happen. Uh, so it's got to be done through our states. Every state needs this. Every state deserves this. And by the way, we're constitutionally guaranteed this. Well, Patrick, we're grateful for your presence here, especially again on short notice. Sorry about that, but thank you very much on behalf of all of our viewers. And if people want to reach out to you personally and the Missouri Freedom Initiative, how do they do that? You bet. Just email me, patrick at mofree.org. Real easy email address. If you're in the state of Missouri, I ask you to get on our email list. We don't share that information with anybody, but if you want to help with the silver and gold legislation, there is no better resource than the Missouri Freedom Initiative. As far as I know, uh, our group is front and center for supporting this bill. And I, I don't know of any other organizations that have it as a high priority like we do. So we're definitely the resource for the grassroots effort to support the bill. Well, Patrick Holland, founder of the F Missouri Freedom Initiative, thank you for joining us again this time on Liberty and Finance. Dunnigan, thank you so much for having me back. God bless you, man. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and these are the Miles Franklin Weekly Specials for January 22nd through January 29th, 2024, while supplies last. First, we feature pre-1933 gold $10 and $20 Liberties at $89 over melt and $139 over melt, respectively. Next, backdated one ounce silver maples are at $3.75 over spot with a minimum order of 50. We also have backdated quarter ounce gold maples at $59 over melt when you purchase two or more. And finally, backdated one tenth ounce gold maples are just $32.50 over melt with your purchase of four or more coins. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1 888 81 Liberty. That's 1 888 815 4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you.